coming up on today's show, I am back from Disney World and I have a trip report to share. And that is coming up today on Traveling with the Mouse. Welcome everyone to Traveling with the Mouse. I am your host today. I am Jason. This is episode 349 of Traveling with the Mouse. And today is a very special episode because I have a trip report for you. But before we get there, we have a little bit of news to cover. And to do that, I have brought along two very esteemed co-hosts. First, we have Adam. What's up, everybody? How are you doing this uh, fine day, Adam? Peachy. Peachy? Doing very peachy. Peachy, yeah. peachy. That's the correct word. Mm-hmm. Of course. And I have also brought along John. Oh, hello there. So glad you could come along. I'm glad to have you, John. What is that from? You don't That's, know? Doesn't don't sound as that? familiar. Yeah. Well, if I'd have said the next line, you probably would have guessed it. I probably did a bad impression, too. It's kind of hard to do this. It's kind of hard to do this <laughs> okay. with a different voice. But anyway, if I had followed up with... I am the Dream Finder. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Yeah. The old figment. Yes. The best, the really the only good attraction that's ever been in that building. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Is the original. <laughs> yes, the only version of said attraction, yeah. Yes, that was, that was ever actually any good. Well, we'll get along from the Dream Finder on to maybe some of the new stuff that's coming um, yeah. We'll start today's episode by traveling around some of the latest news. We'll start with uh, our favorite, or at least favorite, uh, employee of the Walt Disney World Company, <laughs> Mr. Bob Chapik, who Robert. was recently at the uh, Disney shareholder me- meeting and released a little bit of some information that not everything is entirely canceled. But yes. it's just on hold. Right. And so I took a look while I was there, and I can go ahead and tell you, it is definitively on hold. There is no Mary Poppins attraction being working <laughs> on, worked on. Right. Did you go back and there in the courtyard back there? I didn't go all the way back there, but I looked. It's not there. Oh, okay. He made this announcement on, I think it was like March 8th or 9th, right before we left to go on our trip. And I did cut through where the Epcot experience is, but that is also now yeah. closed. Bye bye. Gone. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, it's on hold, but we're also going to close the thing that tells you about all the things we were going to build, but they aren't going to come anymore. Right. So is it on hold like, oh, I don't know, the Venetian Resort? Or is it on hold? <laughs> Like Lodging. Reflections, a lakeside <laughs> lodge and yeah, what, drug rehab center. Right. Yeah. What what type of hold is being placed? Well, the indefinite know. kind. But I, he or, said he needs better <laughs> cash flow to build these things. Wasn't the Mary Poppins ride going to be like not that exciting? A spinner, basically. Yeah. Can't they just pick up Triceratops spin, put some <laughs> yeah, paint yeah. on it, take the dinosaurs off, and like just move it? Because Dino Land doesn't have anything else going for it at the moment, so... Well, I mean, I didn't think that they ever truly got into too many details of what it was actually going to be, right? I mean, I think it was just speculation stage at the last stage we heard. Yeah. So. We just knew they were going to decorate that courtyard behind the UK Pavilion like Cherry Tree Lane. Yeah. The place where the fake Beatles used to play. (laughs) Right. The British Invasion. That's what they were called. Which were pretty good. They were pretty good. Yeah, They actually were. They did quite well. I enjoyed it. I mean, I would stop and listen. Mm -hmm. Well, continuing on our theme. Yeah. Let's continue along with our our favorite Disney employee, Disney CEO, Bob Chapek. Uh, Chapek, who had to apologize for his, as he called it, his silence regarding the don't say gay bill. I would say it's more of his speaking up to the employee saying he wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. Because it wasn't productive, and then turns out there are a lot of employees and fans in the LGBTQ of community. the LGBTQ plus community that he offended, and yeah. turns out once again Bob 
uh, was tone deaf, as usual, to the, the needs of real people, along with the rest of his staff, who says things like some people have more time than money and other people have more money than time, like his CFO. Tone deaf is an understatement. <laughs> he was just wrong. So, and his apology hasn't gone over very well. No, I mean, this is just another example of him... Dropping the ball. Dropping the ball on being ahead of a very important thing. Like, yeah. this is the kind of thing, again, we we're getting into comparisons trap, <laughs> that never would have happened under Iger. It just wouldn't have. Iger would have been on top of this. Yeah, and it's interesting you brought, bring that up, because in his book which I've read an example similar to this where he, he got out of head. It was the, remember the Roseanne Barr thing where she had made some racist tweet, but the Roseanne show was the number one show on TV that season. But yeah. Iger said in the book, he's like, that was a no brainer. Like I didn't have to even like think hard about this decision. The right decision was to fire her from the network and, he said he didn't even think twice about it, even though it probably cost them money because the show was number one on TV that season. I think things like this, he would have been more proactive. I mean, you got to lay some blame also at the team that he has surrounded himself with, and he, he's picked that team to just miss the boat time and time yeah. again with their messaging and their... Yeah. PR I mean, game has been bad. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that PR game again a little bit more. They've triumphantly announced that the Disney's Polynesian Resort yeah. is going to get a new Disney Vacation Club wing, multi-level resort studio. And to be fair, I love these towers. Grand Destino, as we'll talk yeah. about in a minute, I stayed there this past weekend. Still one of my favorite places to stay, to right. go. I love it. But the the artwork that comes out, like, that's not the Polynesian, what yeah. they just released. Right. And thematically, they don't care what anything looks like anymore. It's like, you have the Polynesian, now they're going to throw this tower in there that looks nothing like the rest of the resort. But yet, you look on the other side of the lagoon, you've got the giant Tron show building that's, like, out there. You go to Epcot, you've got tons of thematic problems you know, Guardian's giant building and among other many things that they just don't care anymore how it looks. You know, Galaxy's okay. Edge you can see from the highway. Pandora you can see from when you come in to Animal Kingdom, the back, you know, stage areas. You're on the Skyliner. You see all the backstage of Ratatouille when you're coming in. They don't care what it looks like anymore. None of it matters anymore. And I'll say no. this, that we, we come from a place where we love Disney still the product and we just want them to do better and they can honestly they can do better and there is still a lot of really good things going on i'll talk about that in my trip report i just think that there is a real lack of vision at the top and i do believe they'll correct it and they'll correct it whenever because we've seen these ebbs and flows again Sure. Time and time again, where they bring in someone like a Chapik to try to make him some money, but he lacks creative vision and discipline and an understanding of what makes Disney great. The building of this, if it goes through, as it's shown, right. sure. would totally ruin, in my opinion, the theming of the Polynesian. It would change Especially it after entirely. they just redid the whole thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they did a lot of work on this resort in the last 10 years. I get that they want to increase the number of particularly DVC rooms, which we've talked about before, right? We've all, we've made those comments about how they have so so few options, uh, DVC. Right. I don't think we contributed to this. I don't think. But yeah, just looking at it, you know, I got to thinking about when you were talking about reflections earlier. It's almost yeah. like they just took part of reflections and they're going to... Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, we already have it designed. Let's just put it over here, right? <laughs> and put yep. a little, make it, make a couple of changes right. to make it Polynesian. Whatever three D software they were using. I don't know if you guys watched Mickey Views, mm -hmm. but Braden commented on. He said this is totally rumor, but you know, 
Some folks have speculated that they started to build reflections, found a giant sinkhole. Oh, decided, oops, we can't build here. Yeah. Like, we can't build this. Oh, yeah. And they're like, where can we put this? And they said, oh, let's just get rid of the Spirit of Aloha show, which was also announced. Right, um, and let's time. just slap that tower over there. Yeah. And, and again, the idea of a tower at the Polynesian, I'm not against it. In yeah. principle. Right. Like... Put it in there, make it thematically consistent. Think about how when Bay Lake Tower went up next to the contemporary. It like for folks that don't know anything about DVC, to them it just looks like one resort. Yeah, it's roughly the same height as the original resort, though. In this case, right. this would be overshadowing even this what's supposed to be the main building. I mean, the Polynesian is not supposed to be tall. I mean, it's not designed that way. It's not, but think about Coronado Springs again. Grand Nestino Tower, in my opinion, adds to Coronado, and Coronado didn't have tall buildings. I think it adds to it, and I think it blends in and fits the theme beautifully. Yeah. They do a good job with that one, for sure. Well, yeah. yeah, that's one example of it fitting. Right. And it looks like, I was saying before the show, I thought it looked kind of like Reflections slash Grand Destino slash kind of Riviera. Just smash those designs together, and this is what you get, which doesn't really look very Polynesian at all. Not even Why Aulani. Is it? doesn't even look that Aulani-like. Why is it every time that there is a decision that's going to be unpopular, there's always a sinkhole involved? <laughs> I mean, there was a whole, like, tons of threads about sinkholes and Horizon way back in the day when Horizons was going away. Yeah, and then the, the funny thing is, the, I mean, I'm, I'm not even. I think it's. I'm not even starting to think those were conspiracies. Truthfully, you know, if they just did what they wanted. I mean, because supposedly, oh, there I can show you where this building. Some people are claiming as cast members now yeah. that they could. They have. I could show you underneath the universe of energy where they're using water displacement to keep the building up and keep it. Yeah. You know, to fill in the hole. Right. I'm like, okay, well, they had an opportunity to do something with it now since they're changing it. How come they didn't? Why, are they, why would you use a building that's potentially has a bad foundation? Right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't well, know. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. By the way, that big sinkhole that they came across over there, uh, it's called River Country. <laughs> yeah, it was the pools that were dug in there. <laughs> that's all it was. Now, I mean, we've been pretty negative to start the podcast, and I'm going to balance that out later because I did just come okay. back from Disney World, yeah. and, and I had a great time. I am a little bit being negative about Chapic and some yeah. of that because as I'll talk about my trip report, I went with folks that don't go very often. My my mom and my dad, yeah, yeah. my sister, my brother in law, and my niece. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of discussion, especially with my sister and brother in law, about the way they just felt so nickeled and dined. Mm -hmm. And they just felt like where is the they they said they don't mind spending money. But they want to feel like they're getting value when they're right. getting putting, something when right. they're outlaying their money, and they kept asking me things like, "You're a pass holder and a DVC member. What are you getting? Like, where is the thanks for that? You know, yeah. when when yeah. they were like, "Why don't you get uh, like?" Whenever I was like, "Well, we don't have photo pass," they're like, "Why don't you get photo pass?" I'm like, "Well, I yeah. did." Good question. Until right. now, I don't get that anymore. They're like, "Why?" Why wouldn't you get photo pass? And then they're like, they're like, why don't you just get preferred parking? They're like, why do you have to pay for parking at a hotel? That's You're a, really a pass question. holder. You are a DVC member. You have bought into this resort. And, and so I'm a little negative because I spent a decent amount of a trip that they enjoyed. And I enjoyed defending... Because I took the side, because I love Disney, having to defend Disney. And I had a tough time at times like it, doing so because I agreed with some of their criticisms. And yeah. they were like, at Universal, we paid $200 a person a day, and we got to ride what we wanted. And I would rather do that than what I had to do here. Because they're like, the only reason they had a good time and got to do everything is because I knew how to make it happen. Yeah, That's right. it. Right. Yeah. If they had been going all on their own, yeah, it would probably not have been as good. Too much work. And, yeah. and if you're not in it and a nerd about it like we are, it's hard to like put that much effort into it. <laughs> well, 
you mentioned the the universal part of it, right? I mean, this is I'll just give you an example because I got to be honest. When I couldn't find a place to stay, I was I started looking over here <laughs> right. recently. Yeah, they are advertising currently right now a three park, five night vacation package starting at eighty nine dollars per person per night mm. for on a fa- that's based on a family of four. Now, of course, that is also based staying at their mo- newest and, you know, their most valued, I guess we'll say, resort, sure. the in- endless summer. But even there, when you get the room, you're getting a basically like a two-bedroom type deal. Like a, you're getting something. I mean, it's not like a true two-bedroom, but you know what I mean. It's more space than you're going to get at, say, a value resort at Disney. <laughs> it's, wow. When you have stuff like that happening, yeah, it's kind of hard to... Uh, to you know it you can see their side i guess is what i'm trying to say right and we'll get into the trip report but i mean just to say they went to universal about two or three months ago right on their own and they loved it they're also thrill seekers right so Mm -hmm. disney doesn't have as much for them right but they love the velocicoaster right you know they i want to do that still (laughs) right and they pointed out like they had a great time but Maybe I'm being even more negative than usual just because, as a fan, I'm trying to defend Mm -hmm. what I love to my family. And I'm almost feeling, like, attacked. Like, I have to stand here and defend things that I don't believe in. Yeah, that shouldn't have to be. Like, I have to every minute tell them, okay, just so you know, we're about to spend $15 a person to go do this. Like, what? I don't think you necessarily have to defend it because I think I made this comment one time, not too long ago on Twitter. I forgot what he calls himself now, but it was basically hoot. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? Okay. When he was saying something about, I I forgot what the subject was, but people were saying, and I made the comment about, I was like, well, I think the reason that we do criticize it is because we do. I mean, you do criticize that thing that you love because you want to see it improve. And he was like something about that's like the, yeah, you've said it all right there. You know, it was basically what he said. I can't remember how he worded it, right. but because he, you, you got it from his perspective and seeing this stuff. They did stuff like that they shouldn't have done in some cases um, because right. they loved it, right? So, right. just because you have a passion for something doesn't mean that you love how things are being run or you love how things are being done. But you can re- you can rebel yeah. against the the system and still enjoy the product. Right. Yeah, I agree with you, but also the Disney perspective on that is no matter what they do, half of the fan base is going to hate it, and they're going to hate on it because that's just yeah, part but, of it now. Everyone loves it so much that they, they critique it no matter what. I won't name any names because I don't want to get any cast members in trouble. Okay, right. But I okay. talked to several yes. about the state of affairs. Mm-hmm. And it is unanimous. There is not a single person that thinks the direction is correct, that thinks that Chapek is doing the right thing, thinks that Genie Plus is a good idea, or thinks that it is better in how they are operating today. It was one of those things where they would say something like, I cannot officially agree with you, sir, but I I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> Look right. around and say, wink, wink, you nod, are nod. correct. I went to a guest experiences tent. I'll talk about that in a little bit mm. because I had to complain about something and they said, absolutely agree. Please put your feedback in, sir, into the app. We get that, sir. I had to go again to guest services team and I said, I'm sure you get this all the time. They're like, yes, sir, we do. Just put your feedback in, sir. Uh, Let us know what you think. How high will this bubble up is the question. These complaints. Depends well, on how many I mean, of them the they thing actually is, get. is <laughs> right. the parks are slammed. Yeah. And they can get away with highway robbery right now because people yep. are revenge vacationing. Yep. And so it doesn't matter what they do right now. People yep. are going to show up. It doesn't even matter if us Disney fans all united and stopped going. The parks would be full. Yeah. Two years of pandemic pent up demand, and that's what they're capitalizing on. The question is, what's it going to look like 18 months from now? Right. Because that's why they don't have annual pass sales. They're raking in the money from the daily day tickets, you know, whatever. So they're going to do that as long as they can until the demand dries up. 
Mm, see, that's you're assuming that the demand's going to dry up anytime it will. soon. It will. After the 50th, no. I think it will to some degree. I think Except we've got at least one year of revenge vacationing, at most 18 months, especially after a year. If the pandemic is still in sort of a, a lull and people feel very comfortable, they aren't going to Disney. They're going elsewhere. They're moving on. Like, they aren't going to come back to this. This isn't going to be the type of experience unless you're already bought in, like me. I'm going to keep going back because I find the value in it. Yeah. I, I, like, I can still have a good time without having to ride all the rides. But, like, a family that, that shows up for a once-in-a-lifetime vacation... I think there was a world a few years ago where they show up. This is a once in a lifetime vacation. We're never going to come back here. They get there. They're like, man, this is, this is a good deal. And we can do that. And all of a sudden they're coming back. Uh, I think you leave that park and you're like, I had a good time, but I ain't coming back because literally I like took a mortgage out to come here. You know, if I'm being completely honest of some of the things that have crossed my mind anyway, I... You know, I did. I went ahead and got the annual passes for everybody back in October, and I'm making use of them, uh, obviously. But I have actually mulled over whether or not I would want to renew when the time comes, I, even just the way think, just the way it is. I mean, I've really mulled it over because I'm like, I could potentially, because there's other stuff that I would like to do as well, and I could probably use that money that I'm spending on annual passes to accomplish it. You know, so. I feel like yeah. I'm getting my money's worth because I paid the gold pass rate because of DVC. Yeah. Um, and, and and I'm not at all upset about that. Like, that is a, a reasonable right. price to me. I think the price for a platinum is one where you go like, oof, it doesn't yeah. come with photo pass or any, you know, oof. oof. That is, that is. Oof. But, I mean, I think that the gold DVC pass has helped. And let's just be clear. I love the resorts. I do like, right? They they're they're beautiful. I love them. It is the things about the park operations that I get really upset about, and it, it's like they're trying to make the experience as complicated, as convoluted, and as frustrating as possible for everybody. So, anyways, that's enough negativity. Let's move <laughs> on to the, the some exciting. How many times are we gonna say that? <laughs> yeah. Well. A lot, lately. A lot. It, it is a lot and i feel like we're we're not alone uh there's been a lot of articles written i mean a lot of people are i don't i i, I don't think we are a unique voice here yeah. um and people might be getting tired of hearing it but if you're the type that listens to disney podcasts such as ours you're probably in agreement with us this is not an uncommon take and and rightfully sure. so one positive thing though Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind will be opening not too long from now. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was some stuff sort of leaked a little bit. A little bit. The ride height requirements will be 42 inches. Seemed a little yeah. shorter than I thought it was going to have to be. Aren't you a little short for a Guardians coaster? Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I mean, I know I heard you guys say that, but I got to thinking about what I I've like seen it. of the ride, though. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not that surprised. I mean, because it doesn't look like it's... I mean, it looks like it's designed to be have some intensity and be... I mean, I think it's designed more to be fun than it is intense. I mean, it's not going to be any, like, rock and roller coaster or anything. Right. I no think it's versions. designed more to be fun. Yeah, it's designed more to be fun than intense. Sure. So I'm not right. that shocked by the 42 inches, truthfully. After looking at... You know, you've seen those, those couple of short videos of, like, the engineers testing the ride part out where they're going... It didn't really look all that intense yeah <laughs> so i'm not we, that shocked yeah we saw the interior of the building and we saw yeah. it was kind of some twists and turns in the track but not anything right too crazy the reverse launch will probably be the most in you know exciting kind of part of it i think that'll I mean, be interesting what exactly is it that happens in here truthfully that gets it 42 inches because i mean Good Lord, apparently you just add a two-foot drop to an attraction and it has to have a 40-inch one. Because that's about the difference between Rise <laughs> and uh, Runaway. Hmm. Interesting. Well, <laughs> they are also, it looks like, getting very close to testing some of the ride vehicles on Tron as well, which is good. Yes. Yeah. We've been doing that push-pull as we talked about last week. I watched a short video on that, you know, the Disney released video on that, yeah. some, how they talked about it. 
and how close it makes it sound like it would be. Don't want to speculate too much yet, but yeah. maybe October 1st. I think it could, <laughs> for sure. A year Maybe late. another October 1st. Yeah, maybe another October 1st. We'll see. A so. year late. Yeah. Well, alas, that is the sure. news. I feel like the news is the depressing segment because yeah. where's the good yeah. news these all days? Right. This trip report yes. better be all good. 100% good. Just before you get into it, I do want to mention that uh, I had been... When I was talking about going, I had had to move things around a little bit, but I'm officially going to be going in the first week of June, and I'm going to be staying at Pop. So, Pop Century, you just get a good section. You know, don't go to the '90s. They always preferred. put you in the '90s. I'm a, I already have a preferred. Yeah, you gotta have preferred. Yeah, I I agree. The preferred's better because they will always stick you in the '90s somehow. Uh, I've never I've never even been to the '90s. I always get stuck there, and there's two things wrong with the '90s. One, it's really far, and two, because of the way the resort's laid out, you walk, and somehow you end up not at the right spot. Uh, <laughs> like so you're true. always like, I, I'm so in true. the '90s. Where is my building? That's <laughs> <laughs> what what I was telling Adam. I was like, I get a value price, and then I also have a short Skyliner ride to. You know, Caribbean, <laughs> Riviera, Boardwalk, Yacht Club for, you know, food and whatever else. So, Yeah, I'm excited about hearing about Bar Riva as well because I saw you went there. I did. All right, let's talk <laughs> yeah, about the just... trip. Let's talk about the trip. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So we went on a trip from, I guess it was... We, we our first park day was Friday, so we all arrived on Thursday evening, and we were there until Tuesday morning uh there were eight of us in total that went on this trip uh myself my wife and my son my mom and dad my sister my uh, brother-in-law and my niece to give you a little bit of an idea of the dynamics of this my sister my brother-in-law and my niece well my sister and brother-in-law hadn't been there since 2016 my niece i think last went in 2017 or maybe 2018. I think it was 2017 or 2018 with us, as well as that was the last time that my parents had gone. My dad does not ride a whole lot of rides. He has motion sickness problems. So that was another thing that we were working on. And the stated goals that they had was they wanted to ride the things they had never ridden before. Uh, They had never experienced Toy Story Land. They had never experienced, obviously, Star Wars Land, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. They had never experienced Pandora or Seven Doors Mine Train. Or I think they had done Seven Doors Mine Train. I think they just, one of them didn't remember it. So there was a lot of things they had not yet tried. And so I knew going in that the goal of this trip report was going to be about efficiency. And it was going to cost us a lot of money right right because to do all those things with a group of eight two of the members of the family one of them is you know 75 years old and one is getting you know is 68 years old it's not going to be a brisk pace through through the park so you have to plan accordingly so our plan overall was this they had park hopper passes so we could change parks uh, we were going to try to, you know, do things like get on the rope, stay late. Some of the longest park days I've done in a while. You know when we go on trips, Adam, I like to bow out midday and go relax. Maybe do one long park day in a trip, but not four in a row. I mean, we went rope to rope several times. Yeah. So the first night we arrive on Thursday night and we stay off property at the Delta Hotels by Marriott, which is right near Disney Springs. Not a bad spot. Reasonably priced. uh, Was a good place to land for a night. I didn't arrive there until about 1230 in the morning, so I barely slept. Got a little bit of sleep in and the goal was Epcot. As usual, you sign up for Epcot because it's your first day. It's a late start. But no, Epcot opens (laughs) the earliest it has in about a decade. Yeah. Right. The Crazy. official park opening time was 8.30 in the morning, wow. which meant that we as resort guests, because we were checking into our resort the next day, could start riding at 8 o'clock in the morning. Wow. I got us a Trattoria Al Forno breakfast, taught my family about how you park at the International Gateway <laughs> with the intention 
of going to rope Ratatouille so we didn't have to pay for it. Right. You know, before 7 a.m., I purchased Genie Plus. Right at 7, I pulled a test track for yeah. probably about, I don't know, 11, 11 a.m.-ish was about the time that I got. Really? Yeah. On that purpose, was, or that was what was available? That was what it was available with the wow. speed with which I was able to pull it. Yeah. It goes it quick it, sometimes, yeah. It goes quick. So we arrive. We park at Trattoria Al Forno. We get in. They open the rope. We go right in. We head over to Ratatouille. I noticed that they didn't drop the rope at the International Gateway as early as apparently they must have at the front of the park because I saw people walking around World Showcase before they dropped our rope. Hmm. But Ratatouille was experiencing a delayed opening. Ugh, boo. Isn't that what everything new does at Disney lately? <laughs> yeah. Which started the the trip off interesting where, you know, my brother-in-law was like, boo, Universal's better. That Why can't they have the ride open at the start of the day? And what <laughs> made it more confusing... And I told them later, I was like, it wasn't that it was broken down. It was that they probably weren't done with the opening procedures yet. Right. Because it's so early. (laughs) Yeah. But what got us really confused is I was the tour guide. We go to scan in and they tell me my tickets aren't active. Um, Because I renewed into a different level of annual pass, I had to go back over to guest services, get the passes activated, the rest of the family was in the park and they had no idea where they were going. Wow. They were standing in France and they're like, Ratatouille's closed. Where do we go? And I'm on the phone with them and I'm like, go to Frozen. They're like, how do we get there? And I'm yeah. like, walk away from me towards Morocco. And they start walking. We get our passes activated. We scan in. They're not exa- exactly fast. How far did they make it? My sister and my niece were made it all the way. I caught up to the rest of the family right about at China. Oh, okay. I mean, they were pretty far along. I mean, we had to sit there and they had to activate our passes and they had to tell us the spiel and this is when it ends. Do you want to add the photo pass on? No. Do you want to add water parks on? No. You you know, then they had to scan our bands three times or whatever they had to do. We had to sign something and then then we were off on our way. My gosh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot of work. So we get in, we go to Frozen. By the time we get there, I think it's posted 45. Wow. The line is backed up basically to just the, at the beginning of the indoor section. We wait 15 minutes. Oh. It was it was I was going to say, yeah, if it's just there, <laughs> there's no yeah. way it's 45. Because there's no lightning lanes going at that point. So it was 15 yeah. minutes. We get on and off the ride. Uh, they hadn't done that ride. Well, some of them hadn't done that ride before. Yeah. Some of them had. Good ride. My dad was even able to ride that one. But while we were doing that, while we were on the way to Frozen, I just bit the bullet and bought Ratatouille for later. Because I'm like, we're not going to be able to time this. I'm not waiting in line. So by not opening at Park Open, we bought it. Yeah, $12 a person, Ratatouille. So Chapik was there and said, let's delay the opening of Ratatouille just so we can get Jason. <laughs> I mean, that's the perception it. that he created with my family. <laughs> my sister and brother-in-law are like, uh, my brother-in-law was telling this story. He's like, I paid a hundred and whatever dollars a day for this ticket. And Disney has stolen X minutes away from my day. They owe me a refund of X dollars. I'm like, you're welcome to go to a guest experience tent and try to plead your case and see what happens. So we go to Frozen. Of course, now everybody's hungry. My original plan was to do Ratatouille and Frozen right away. And so then we go and we eat Kringla, which I remember Kringla having some savory choices. And they they were not there anymore in breakfast. Mm. Didn't they used to have some savories? Yeah, some of it was, I thought. There was no savory. None Mm. whatsoever. All sweet. sweet. (coughs) But, you know, it's food. So we eat there. I get some coffee and... Uh, You know, we have that test track not too far along. So I talk everybody into somehow at like 930 in the morning, let's go do Mission Space. So we do Mission Space Orange side. Oh, okay. Orange side. First bright and early in the morning. Oof. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Did they like it? The kids did. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said they were thrill seekers, right? Mm Mm-hmm. My sister said I'd done that before, and the last time I did it, I said, I have no intent, need to do that again, and then I just did it again, and I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> okay. My brother-in-law said he was trying to take a nap on it, and I'm like, what are you doing? Whatever. 
Okay. Sure. That probably easy. works out worse, actually. Yeah. yeah, it'd probably make him feel worse. Because your brain uh, it starts to pick up the sense of motion more. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So we get off that. My wife wanted something from, I think it's called the donut box or, or something. It wasn't donuts that she wanted. By test track. She wanted a, a different meal item, though. So we do that, and we go to test track. Uh, we go through the fast pass line, lightning lane line, whatever you want to call it. Again, terrible branding. Because I had to explain that to my family. They're like, well, what's Genie versus Genie Plus versus Lightning Lane? And I'm, yeah. right. Getting all that explained was not th- intuitive. <laughs> I think I'd have been like, look, I'm the expert, and even I don't have a grip on it this great yet. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Time about it, yeah. <laughs> so, we've already started off on that foot. Uh, we get to test track, we get right up to where we're supposed to tap in and go into the car creation room. And ladies and gentlemen, your wait will be a little bit longer as Test Track is currently non-operational. Great. So we have to stand there for about 20 minutes. Again, family, brother and mom, sisters, like, they're stealing our day away. They're taking our minutes away. All right. But eventually we do get on, and it was fun. Everybody loved Test Track. The kids play for a little bit in the play area, which I think has become sort of a regular stop. Right. The Princess um, and the Frog play area, is that right? Yep, yep. And, and now the kids are kind of melting down because all they've had is like a cinnamon roll. Yeah. So we bustle over to Mexico Pavilion and the line for the quick service there in Mexico outside is super long. Oh, so wow. my wife stands in that line to order them food and the rest of us go and get on the Grand Fiesta tour. Okay. Ride the Grand Fiesta tour. No one enjoys it as much as me, although I point out hidden Mickeys, get some excitement from that. Uh, we get off. The kids are able to eat. I found out my son likes the rice and beans there, so that's now an option for us from, like, where can where will he eat at Epcot? Yeah. The Mexico Quick Service. Nice. That's where he'll eat. And while he's eating, my brother-in-law, myself, and my dad go off. My brother-in-law and I go to... La Cava de Tequila. Ah, wonderful place. Yes. I get. Uh, I order an NPH, Neil Patrick Harris drink, and yeah, a top a shelf. One. I thought my wife wanted the Neil Patrick Harris. She tried it. She wasn't as big a fan this time, so we swapped, and she had the top shelf, and I had the NPH drink uh, this time. I like the NPH. That's the one I got last time. Yeah. Good. So we, we were able to entertain the kids, and I was very excited about this. My son... And then my niece got really into the kid cop fun stops once we had been in Mexico. Oh, cool. And so they had started to run ahead to like go find the stops in every country, which was really exciting. You know, we're working our way around the pavilions and my mom and dad hadn't eaten yet. So they wanted a pretzel from Germany. So we slowly make our way around and then we stop in Germany for that. Mm-hmm. They're still doing their thing. Uh, we eat there. We keep moving forward. We end up in the America's Pavilion. And oh, we stop to get a drink there. And while we stop to get a drink, my mom noticed. She's like, the show's starting soon. Do you want to do the show? So my sister, my son, and my niece all start running ahead to keep doing the Kid Cut Fun Stops. My brother-in-law, myself, my wife all go get drinks from Regal Eagle Smokehouse Walk-Up Bar and we arrive just in time for the American Adventure show. Turns out you can take drinks into that show. Oh, really? They just changed the policy. That'll I make took, it better. I took a Moscow Mule or whatever they made at Regal yeah. Eagle right on into that show. Nice. Way better when you can take a drink in. <laughs> I'll stay awake for that. I don't know if I've ever actually done that show before, actually. It's not bad. It's pretty good. I've always enjoyed it. Yeah, there's stuff that they could still update, though. They spend maybe 30-ish seconds about slavery, and it's just Frederick Douglass. Yeah, in a, out a, in river. a boat. Yeah. And they present it as, like, racism is something that is a solved problem in America. They did pay some good lip service to a few things, but they, mm-hmm. as with a, a lot of things that maybe are a little bit older, they should maybe tell less of the whitewashed version of american history but i would say the animatronics in my opinion were stellar 
right? To just to just see that la- the way they used them. I thought that some of the visual effects were good. Overall, would give it a good good mark on the show. You got to remember that walking Ben Franklin has been there since uh, 1982. Sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. The show's yeah, but- not changed a lot, to be honest, except for maybe the end, right? Not lots changed since 1982. Yeah, I think if they were doing it today, Mark Twain wouldn't be a prominent character. But we like the show. We get done. The kids have already completed their Kid Cop Fun Stops. And this is when it is now time for us to do our Ratatouille individual lightning lane that we now paid for because it was not working earlier. We ride that and everybody thought it was very cute. I was still kind of upset that we had to pay money because I worked so hard yeah. to get them there on I was going to say, is it worth $12, Jason? <laughs> A is that person. how much it was? Yeah, it was twelve dollars a person. It was worth it in that case to make sure that they got it done that day. Right. Right? If it was us and we had gotten there to rope and it was broken, we just wouldn't have ridden it that day. Right. And I wouldn't have gone to Frozen either. I would have just gone to Test Track. Or done it last. Right. One of the I two. just wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't have done it? Right. Okay. So all eight of you did it? All seven. Seven of us. Oh, seven. Okay. But seven. I did accidentally pay for an eighth because oh. it, you know, we had my dad on the lightning lane and I was just like moving quick because it. I got it in some sort of moment where it was available. So and I just hit go, 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 go. Again, a problem with the Genie Plus service. You have to hit go, 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 go and hope you don't lose it in the yeah. two seconds that it takes you to pay for something. Yeah, exactly. So 96 bucks. Yeah, plus tax, so it was over 100 and, and I have to go figure all this out because all the Genie Plus, all the Lightning Lanes, I personally paid for, and I have to go tell my family how much they owe the owe, it, owe me. And I <laughs> paid for all of them the whole trip. Oh, wow. Yeah, and just, just going to improve their imp- opinion. <laughs> yeah. Whew. 100 bucks to ride Ratatouille. No thanks. For eight, for seven people or eight people. Yeah. yeah. No. Mm-hmm. After we had already paid 100 bucks for Genie Plus. Yeah. And essentially your ticket price to get in. And our ticket price to get in. So yeah, ridiculous. Anyways, we ride that, start making our our way around the park. My niece is now hungry. This is the problem when you have eight people. Someone's always hungry or got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So we stop, and the thing I think I saw her eat some of the most of on the trip, she loved the fish and chips in the UK Pavilion. We we did the walk-up fish and chips. She enjoyed that. (laughs) Which gave me a chance to peruse a few stores, go to the... Uh, tea shop. Yeah, they were missing the tea I wanted that day. And then we made our way around to... I, I got us a soaring lightning lane. We made our way over to the land pavilion where we did Soren, one of my mom's favorites. So that also landed very well. And then I convinced no everybody to do... Yeah. <sighs> and then we did Living with the Land. Oh boy. Heard about this. I love living with the land, and I got a lot of ridicule from my family about living with the land. My brother-in-law thought it was not a good ride, and he kept joking about it for the remainder of the trip. Like, well, that was at least better than living with the land. (laughs) Oh, wow. Did you ride Figment at all? We did not. Okay. My dad liked living with the land because it's, that's the thing, it's not just about riding a ride like you have to appreciate the educational and what they do yeah yeah and every time you ride it they're growing something different yeah it's cool to watch i like looking at it i i do too i thought it was a grand ride and i think i raised a lot of eyebrows when i told him like two of my favorite rides in epcot are living with the land and the grand fiesta tour and he's like (laughs) what's wrong with you Uh, makes sense. So we never got around to Spaceship Earth, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Because that I just felt like too far of a walk. But we yeah. had to go to dinner. We went to dinner at Shula's Steakhouse okay. over at the Swalfen. <laughs> sure. We took the boat to Boardwalk and then walked the rest of the way. because I should have just taken the boat all the way to Swalfen, but we were close on time. Shula's would not recommend for the price. Way too expensive. Not that good. I had read really good reviews. Well, not okay. worth it in my opinion. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. It was good, especially if you like like a classic steakhouse where you pay for everything a la carte. Yeah. In my opinion, nothing to write home about. Had better meals at Disney that trip for a lot less money. Mm, okay. That's my review there. We head back into Epcot for Harmonious. They get us a spot in between basically Canada and the center. 
what I noticed in that viewing is that I couldn't really see the projections inside of the little ring even being off center just a little bit. Like I could just, I just couldn't even out. make out the projections in the ring. So it's very important for you to be directly on the center to really see everything. But they like the show, all right. We get done, we head home. And so, again, we were there, literally, rope to rope. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Busy day. Day one. We check into our hotel. Uh, they did not put us all together. We go to Grand Destino, and I am very happy because I'm back home. And we, we go there. The plan for the next day is Hollywood Studios. And again, opens at 8.30, I believe it was. We have to be there by 8. We're going to hit the rope. Same thing as the day before. And now I'll speed through a little bit of that day just to give you an idea of everything we did that day. So rather than going step by step on that, just give me a moment. I want to tell you. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that I did get to stop by Trowel and Trellis on our first day. Yeah. And they had the Wonderful. impossible beef short ribs. Love it. Which were fantastic. Love Again, it. Like you just have to you just have to do that. So the next day we wake up, we are going to go to Hollywood Studios. Again, I buy Genie Plus. At 7 a.m. I do what you expect. I pull slinky and rise and the strategy that worked well is i got my wife involved yes and i pulled slinky she pulled rise simultaneously yeah yeah. that allowed us to get two good things at about the same time the 10 to 11 o'clock a shower okay we go and we rope drop and let me tell you a little bit about what we achieved at hollywood studios okay quick quick question was she using your account, different phone? My account, different phone. She doesn't have an account. Okay. What? That's what I was thinking. Both on my account. Oh, yeah. interesting. Well, I'd heard yeah. someone else do that, so I wanted. To, I said, I bet that's what you did, too. That's what I would yeah. have to do. <laughs> so Both on my so, account, yeah. different phone. Yep. Huh. Okay. So interesting. Okay. She pulled it. We were able to do it simultaneously. So we purchased rides. We have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and we all sing Nothing Can Stop Us Now for the rest of the trip. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> then we went from there to Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Again, standby, not bad. Then we go to Toy Story Midway Mania, standby, not too bad. Maybe that was like a 20, 25 minute wait. Then we head over for our Rise Fast Pass while well, we eat at Woody's Lunchbox before we head over to Rise. After we eat at Woody's Lunchbox, we head over to Rise. We get right up to the merge point and it breaks down. After a little while, they tell us, hey, do you want to leave? So we left the ride, and they gave us an anytime fast pass for it. And at that point, we start making our way over to try to find some popcorn or something. And then the bottom drops out of the sky. And everybody just runs to Muppet Vision. That is, We do Muppet Vision. That is the most full I have ever seen that theater. I don't think there was an empty seat in that house. But they like Muppet Vision. By the time it was done, Rise was working again, so we do Rise of the Resistance. The general consensus was that was worth the money. Yeah. Eat lunch at ABC Commissary, go to Slinky Dog Dash, hit up Baseline Tap House. Wonderful. Yeah. We do the Indiana Jones Stunt Show Spectacular. Nice. Okay. Another exciting thing. Head to Star Tours. I get another drink from Baseline Tap House. (laughs) Awesome. Then we had a fast pass to hit up a rock and roller coaster. And that ended our day at the Hollywood Studios before it was time for dinner. Uh, we had dinner over at Epcot. We took the Skyliner, so we did get to have them experience the Skyliner. We went to the France, France Pavilion, had some wine, and ate dinner at Chefs de France. I did the pre fee menu. And while we were doing that, at 5.02 p.m. I was able to secure at a now known drop a flight of passage lightning lane for post dinner. So as soon as dinner was over, we took the Skyliner back to our car, drove over to Animal Kingdom, went into Animal Kingdom, which closed at 830. We got there at about 730. Walked in, used that lightning lane to ride Flight of Passage, 
And then with two minutes to spare, got into a walk online and rode Navi River Journey. Wow, nice. Another rope to rope day. <laughs> it's a lot. I see a pattern here. That is a day as a tour guide for the family. I am really proud of like everything I just listed to get all of that into a day for eight people. Yeah. That's pretty good for sure. I mean, <laughs> cost a lot of money. It too. did. It cost a lot of money, but that's what it took. Like if I hadn't spent yeah. the money, we yeah. wouldn't have gotten all that done by any stretch of the imagination at all. Unless this was 2019, then you could. Of have course. Done. Yeah. If it was 2019 or back whenever Disney was, a thing we knew how to conquer without spending bazillion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I figured I had to plug that loophole. Yeah. Anyways, another great day. Yeah. I feel like that might have been the day that my brother in law and sister really liked the most because it's Hollywood Studios. There was more thrill rides, right? Sure. The next day, we go to Magic Kingdom. Of course, I buy Genie Plus there. I do him and Haw for a little bit. And ultimately decide to fi- buy Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. My brother-in-law said he liked the coaster. I thought it's not worth buying the Lightning Lane. Finally landed on, let's buy it. We buy it for late in the evening. I get it. By the time I hem and haw, it's 640 to, 6.20 to 7.20 or something like that is the fast pass I have to do. Or 6.40 to 7.40, something like that at night. Again, you know, the idea is to try to be there closest to rope. But this time we did not actually get there at rope we do space mountain the people mover and then of course the tomorrowland speedway and then at this point the lines everywhere are super long i'm able to get fast passes for later but i can't get anything for right now so i'm like what do y'all want to do you just can't quit calling it that can you they're fast passes that's (laughs) what they are i refuse to use their their like if i can't use your <laughs> branding then your branding is terrible yeah right that's pretty it's good it's not it's not you it's them yeah so we stand by little mermaid and while we're there we place our mobile order at columbia harbor house nice columbia harbor house was interesting i've also started to notice i think i noticed it in another place i think if you go and order at the restaurant there's more options that's what's on mobile order like for oh, instance yeah. i could order the trio which had the fish, the fried ch- chicken strips, and the shrimp and fries. But there was no option in the mobile order for me to just get, like, the fish only or the shrimp only or the chicken. You no, know, like, I had to get the trio. But I think if I had gone to the restaurant, I could have ordered that. Yeah. So we eat at Columbia Harbor House, and then we stand by for about 30, 35 minutes for small world. Eesh. But I make it all the way through this time. Right. No event. We made, we made it all the way through Small World. We are able to knock that off. And then we have a lightning lane for Haunted Mansion. Okay. The Haunted Mansion line wrapped all through the main queue, out the back into that little area, basically all the way back up to the bridge uh, like it did back during COVID yeah. times. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It was long. But... We got it done. Again, lots of fun. And then I was going to take him over to do Big Thunder because you know Big Thunder moves pretty quick. But on the way over there, it breaks down. So I do, it's just me with the two kids. I do Splash Mountain because nobody else wants to do it because it's cold or whatever. But I do Splash Mountain anyways. And it was a lot of fun. The kids loved it. It is fun. I think I had to wait in standby for 45 minutes to ride it. Wow. What did they do while you were doing that? The rest of them, they went and got dull whips. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then waited on the bridge to watch us come down. My sister and a couple... They're mounting down. Magic Kingdom is a madhouse. I will say, in a lot of ways, doing a park day at Magic Kingdom is one of my least favorite things to do, where you're trying to ride a bunch of rides with a bunch of people because it is it's a mad house in there there it just the vibe of magic kingdom feels frenetic cramped there's not that much good food yep and everybody's there with kids and just trying to like force like it's mandatory fun time parade everywhere <laughs> and so it was wearing thin on a few I people yeah. yeah after two other full days yeah 
Right. So the kids want ice cream now after getting out splash. So we walk over to the Edie's in Main Street. Okay, yeah. Get it outside. And I have I had now lined up for the evening. I was able to have two four people reservations for Skipper Canteen. I was able to pull a Jungle Cruise midday, which I don't know how I was able to pull that off because that was sold out most of the day. And then we had, of course, our lightning lane in the evening for Seven Doors Mine Train. We're all standing around. We're about to do this. And it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, a little bit for the parade. And a few of them just are bowed out. So my sister, my wife, and the two kids head back to the pool uh, at the hotel. And then it's, I'm just left with my, my mom, my dad brother-in-law and me so i was able to drop one of the two four people reservations for skipper canteen it actually worked out very well and the rest of us continue our day at magic kingdom so now we're sans kids it's a lot easier right i'm able to watch the festival of fantasy parade great show they do have the fire coming out of the dragon i do the hall of presidents which i don't know the last time i ever did hall of presidents yeah what'd you think it was fine. Obviously, the sort of message didn't land with a lot of folks in the audience who, of course, spent the last few presidents treating it like it was a football game, right. booing certain presidents and cheering for others. And I'm just like, none of the sort of pomp and circumstance leading up to this helped with sort of tempering that urge. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. I mean, that's happened. I mean, even in the 90s, I remember that happening. Yeah. yeah. It's not. I mean, like you know, it you is never now, hear. It, it's just always bad whenever they say happen. Millard Fillmore, and everybody's like, "Boo!" No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 cool no, the the time Adam is talking about Reagan got a little something, and then when Clinton was introduced, he got some booze. But yeah, during so that there's a period. there's a pattern here. But yeah. anyway, that was also the last time that I went there. Have I mentioned so that happens. before? I think I mentioned that a time. Or yes, two. you have. It's like 28 years ago or something. <laughs> My mom wanted to go because my mom went to Disney World about 50 years ago. And she was there the year it opened. Oh, it and she say. did. She, she was there 50 years ago. I, I say about. I think it's next week. It's the 50th anniversary of when she first went. Wow. And she did Hall of Presidents and she wanted to do it. Yeah. And of course you got to do it because of that. But I mean, when you give a story like that, you can't. I would even I would even have to go. <laughs> right, yeah, I would do it too. So we do that. We go have our dinner at Skipper Canteen, and it was lovely. I st- we got to do the room I had not yet done, the C room. And as you can tell, it's the C room because you can see it's a room. And yeah, <laughs> the skipper there was hilarious. We had a great dinner, just the four of us. I had a couple of drinks, started feeling a little bit better. And uh, we had a fast pass for Jungle Cruise. So, like, my thematic planning almost worked out perfectly. We went for, straight from Skipper Canteen onto the Jungle Cruise nice. via a lightning lane. And the Skipper on the Jungle Cruise sort of went off the, not off the book, because they can't go off the book, but she went with jokes you don't always hear. Yeah. Like, you feel like you go on a Skipper and they, they always pick a lot of the same jokes. She went a little bit more... Nice. new and i liked it i liked uh, i gave her a cast compliment in that awesome. uh, i think the the cast member's name was mckenzie so mckenzie you were a great skipper nice it's always good yeah and so now it's time for the rest of our party to start making their way back from the pool i got them a grand floridian reservation they walk over make it in time we do seven doors mine train okay. after that we decide that it's fireworks are at eight and we want to and by the way i should point out one thing about this magic kingdom day this was sunday the day we lost an hour of sleep oh, as right. well yeah because of daylight, daylight savings time oh boy so it's actually not eight o'clock that they did the fireworks they did the fireworks at nine so we get on seven doors my train i was like well let's go try to fit in big thunder and big thunder is backed up like crazy and i'm like Y'all ain't going to make this. And I refuse to get in line and I go stand in the hub because I'm like, I'm watching Enchantment. I don't care what y'all do. I'll save you a spot. My dad and I stand there. We make some friends. They show up (laughs) with two minutes to spare. Yeah. They show up at 8.58 and cram their way in there. We watch Enchantment. And and I know that I have spoken a lot of things about Enchantment on this show. 
It's a good show. It's a good show. But it's no happily ever after. <laughs> Not okay. even close. But it's a good show. I feel like if I had never watched Happily Ever After, I would say it's an excellent show. But Happily Ever After is leagues better, even in person. Leagues better. You said there was no Tinkerbell that night. Was it just high winds or something? High or winds, rain? yeah. High, high winds. winds, yeah. I figured it's gotta be it's it's gotta be a lot for them to not do it. But I will say this: putting aside my Happily Ever After love. I will go back and watch Enchantment again because it is a good show. I do like the sort of the beginning and end parts, especially. I feel like they build build pretty well. It's about five minutes shorter, but I think they do that because they realize the thing of they have about people's attention span is why they keep cutting country Everything. bears. Right. <laughs> well, that's the only reason. No, but yeah, you're well, right. Well, given they, what they've cut, it, they, I would think so. I would say so. That's I mean, true because well. they've left anything that's potentially offensive. So. That's the end of the trip for my brother-in-law, who has to leave the next day. Okay. We wake up. The next day is Animal Kingdom. My sister has to leave around 3.30. Oh, since we had already done Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey before, I said, we can sleep in. You guys have earned a sleep-in day because you did the most important things. We wake up. I get Fast Pass for Kilimanjaro Safari. Sure. At first, we weren't going to get Genie Plus at all. But as I saw what the weights were looking like while we were still at the hotel, I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy this. And so we do Genie Plus, uh, get Kilimanjaro Safari. And once I used that lightning lane, I spent hours trying to get something else. Not at Animal Kingdom. By the way, we, do, we did do Dinosaur before we did Kilimanjaro Safaris. So we did, we did go stand by Dinosaur, then went to Kilimanjaro Safaris. But that said, after I got on Kilimanjaro... We wanted to go to Hollywood Studios. They didn't get to ride Tower of Terror. And so my niece wanted to ride Tower of Terror. And I refreshed and I refreshed and I refreshed. And I knew about some of the drops. Yeah. And it kept showing up. And I would click on it. Gone. And it would be gone. Yeah. And then I would refresh. And I would Genie. click on it. Yeah. Uh, and it would be oh, gone. Genie. Oh, Genie. And then I would refresh. Yeah. And I would click on it. And it would be gone. And I would do this for hours. And I would see like, fine, I'll take Rockin'. Again, refresh, click on it, gone. Mickey and Minnie's on our railway. Refresh, click on it, gone. (sighs) Millennium Falcon Smuggler's on. Refresh, click on it, gone. Every single ride, I would be, I could not pull anything to save my life. It just would not keep the ride that showed up in my app this ride is available click 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 not available click 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 not available now in the interim we do take the uh the uh, wildlife express train out to raviki's planet watch my son was doing the wilderness explorer badges he loved all that and we do the drawing class which honestly was one of the highlights of my trip i've always wanted to do it i'm really proud of the mini i drew my son did a great cool. job. My mom, that might be the happiest I saw her the whole trip. She was uh-huh. so proud of what she had drawn. Uh, she cool. kept all of them, and she said she's going to frame all of our drawings That's and hang awesome. them up. That is cool. Yeah, it was one of those things that I always enjoyed doing when it was at the studio still. And then also they usually had uh, drawing classes on the cruise ship too. I don't know if they had any on the ones you've been on, Jason, but that used to be a thing they do. They yeah. did that drawing class. So. Cool. Those were always, I would always make a point to get those drawing classes on the ship as well because it was just fun. And my son, you can see, uh, I don't think I posted it on uh, Twitter. I, I'll, I'll think about it. I don't know if I want to, you know, put it out there, but he did a really good job for a seven year old. Like you can yeah. tell it's mini. Yeah, I saw it. It was good. I was very proud of mine. We had a lot of fun. We got back on the train. And then the question was, did we want to do the Festival of the Lion King or what? Because it was about time for my sister to leave. Instead, you know, the kids were like, we really want ice cream. And I said, well, if they want ice cream, head over towards Asia near Everest because they have a decent ice cream stand. On the way there, I saw there was a relatively short line for the guest experience tent. Uh, And I'm like, I'm going to complain. So I stand in line. Of course, it was a relatively short line, but the guy in front of me, like, 
I guess his whole entertainment was just talking to guest experience team because he just stood there and talked to them for like 35 minutes about everything in his mind about like, (laughs) oh, yeah, I used to be going in. So finally, the other lady finished. Uh, I talked to her. I explained to her. I'm like, I've been trying to pull Tower of Terror. This is what happens. And in fact, while I was standing in line, it popped up again and went and loaded. I'm like, see, look right here. This says it's available at 4 p.m. I click on it and it's gone. Like I've been doing this all day. Like, I understand that you get this complaint all day, every day. And she's like, yes, sir, I do. Oh, it's so annoying. And I'm like, I said, this system is it's terrible. Garbage. Yeah. She's like, yes, the old system was much easier. This system I paid for, and it is terrible. And then she's like, well, I can't get you a Tower of Terror. There's none more, no more available. Would you like to take Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run? I said, no. My niece has not ridden Tower of Terror, yeah. and I've spent hours trying to get it. I want Tower of Terror. So I sit there and she types up like a four page long thing wow. saying, go to Hollywood Studios, go to guest services, and they will take care of you. Wow. So we go and take my sister out to ride share. She gets an Uber, heads to the airport. Oh, wow. We head over to Hollywood Studios. Because she was there, I told her that we had seven people. I go to Hollywood Studios, I run ahead, and they gave us seven, one attached to each person. Um, fast, anytime fast passes for Tower of Terror. You know, that allowed the kids to ride twice. They're only running one side of Tower of Terror. The standby line was 180 minutes. And we were able to skip that line twice. Why were they only running one side? They're doing something to the other side. Huh. 180 minutes posted wait. Touring plan said expect at least 140, I think. And we skipped it twice, which helped me make feel like I got my $15 worth There is a couple of Genie Plus strategies out there now. And one of them, one of the primary strategies involves planning time to spend at a guest experience tent to complain about Genie Plus (laughs) in order to get what you paid for. I mean, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you got to find the right person to complain enough. These days, they probably get a lot of people doing that same thing, but for rightfully so. Yeah, no, like, that's how you use Genie Plus. You buy it. You get your first one, you try your second one, you complain, and that's how you get it. Like, the system, the optimal version of a system involves talking to a guest experience team member is a terrible system. Yeah, that should never have to happen. A system you are paying for. Yeah, a lot of money, too. Right. Per person. So we read Tower of Terror, and then we have to figure out dinner. And we saw that Topolino's had a walk-up list available, so we go hop on the Skyliner and try to get in range, and right as the time I get in range, it's out of walk-up list. So we go to Primo Piatto, which saved us a bunch of money and also was very good. And I got to go to Bar Riva at the Riviera, and I found out that they put our drink that Chris had made, the Mediterranean Margarita, it is now the Riva Margarita, and it is on the menu. Sweet. And... I, I'd like to think that us and all of our other Bar Riva stands out there helped make that happen. And so I was very happy. I'll claim that. And I got to say, I was very happy to be on property at Riviera. It's your home. I felt a sense of like, this is this is my place. You know, like, it was different because I'm like, this is my place. I'm coming here. I even said out loud, I'm like, I was sitting there watching my son eat at Primo Piano and I'm thinking... I wonder if 40 years from now he's going to be sitting at Primo Piatto with with his kids. Yeah. You know? That would be cool. Here at Riviera. Because we own here. We're going to go here every year for like forever. That is one of the moments where I felt like I'm really happy that I had bought into the vacation club. It was good. I, I want to be back there. I want to just spend a trip there. I'm excited about the trips we have planned for the Riviera. Yeah. But now the trip is almost to a close. We're almost out. We have to figure out what we're going to finish up the night with. And we end up at Rock and Roller Coaster. We end up waiting probably 45 minutes to ride Rock and Roller Coaster a little bit longer to wrap up the night. And we head out. We get in the car. You know, the next morning we wake up, we check out, we eat a little bit of breakfast. And after everybody else has gone their merry way, my wife, my son, and I head to the pool yeah. I worked from the pool for a couple of hours. I just had to unwind a little bit before I got in the car. We left probably about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. There was a all lanes closed on 75. And then the biggest thing, we went to Bucky's. 
and I don't I didn't tell y'all about this, but we went to Bucky's, went to pump gas, we pumped our gas, came back in, car wouldn't start. Oh wow. Wasn't the battery. It was trying to... We went and got, like, the fuel injector cleaner, and I sat there for a while. I don't know if we flooded the engine or what, but finally got it to start, thankfully. There was a moment there, Adam, where I was like... I was about to call you and be like, Hey, buddy, can you drive to Bucky's and come get us? Wow. Um, wow. So we didn't get home till almost midnight last night because of that. Oh, wow. See, I didn't realize that's why you took that long to get back yeah but that said we're back home safe and sound my overall rating is that the trip was a major success they got to do everything they wanted to do i felt like a really good tour guide i felt like i did it as best as i could um but i also was very frustrated at times because i felt like i was working with a hand tied behind my back with the genie plus system and i felt like every time i'm turning around just being like a hundred dollars thank you Another hundred dollars. Okay. Another hundred dollars. Okay. Like my, my mom at the end was like, tell me how much I owe you. And I still got to figure that out. She's like, why haven't you figured that out? I'm like, I spent so much money. I got to sit down and figure out what I spent. Yeah. It's a lot. I want to say because every day we did an individual lightning lane and genie plus every single day we did that except for the last day at animal kingdom. All we did was genie plus. But that's because one of the days we did two individual lightning lanes because we did both Rise and Flight of Passage in the same day. That meant we spent, for eight people, over $200 extra total every day. You bought two more tickets. Yeah. But I don't know how else I would have gotten them on all the stuff they wanted to do in that short of a trip with the speed that they were moving. Because, you know, I mean, they're eight people. And I'm not going to fault them for that. People got to stop. Yeah. I had my parents who are a little older. They don't move that fast. Yeah. People got to stop to use the bathroom, stop to eat. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Can't do it. No way they would have gotten to see all that stuff without spending No that money. way. Yeah. You just can't do it. So, overall, do you think everybody, I doubt, loved it more than Universal, but did they kind of come around on Disney, you think? or They what? loved Disney. Okay. But they definitely felt like they were nickel and dimed. They yeah. said their preference would be make the price exorbitant. Whatever you want to make it. That's what Universal does. Just make a price. Set a flat price. It's like, you want to have a better experience? Pay this money. And you right. get it. Not pay money and you still have to work. Right. I think the, the other thing about the old fast pass system that helped with the perceived value is that Right now, in this system, you can only hold one. So everybody is just trying to hold out for all the good ones. Mm -hmm. In the old FastPass system, people would sign up for three. And not all of them were good three. They recognized they were going to get one good one and two not-so-good ones. But then they're like, well, I know in my day I'm at least getting these three. Yeah. If nothing else, I don't. I'm not expecting anything else, but I'm getting these three attractions. Right, I'm gonna get three in for sure, with a I short get, wait. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and it created a higher perceived value. Whereas here, you're not guaranteed even two. Yeah, that's true. unless you're just gonna get ones you don't even like. If you want to get one that's like wait time one minute for the show, fast pass one minute. You know it. There's no guarantee that by the time you've used your first one, there's still any left to get on any of the other attractions. Yeah. And then even if something pops up, you're not, you're 99.9% of the time, you aren't going to get it because it's gone within a second. Right. Would you say, here's the thing, uh, based on what I, I gather from what you were saying, you had to pay and then also had to work twice as hard to make it work. (laughs) Correct. Yeah. That sucks. Then you, then you had to when it was free. Correct. And so if you give me the choice between this system or no system, give me the standby lines. Yeah, Just give me take no it system. Away. <laughs> yeah, take it all away. Yeah, All or nothing. Yeah, I, I feel like there's got to be some middle ground here. And but I'm with you, Adam. The number one thing is if Genie Plus presents you a time. Hold it. <laughs> and hold it. I'll point this out. Seven Doors Mine Train 
it popped up and it said something like 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. I clicked on it. This is a paid individual lightning lane. Yeah. I clicked on the time. We, we hesitated for a second because we're like, okay, we're good. We're going to ride this. Okay. Selected the party, hit credit card, and said, okay, next. Said, congratulations, you are booked for 6.40 to 7. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, man. It wasn't even the time that I had picked. Like, yeah. This isn't that hard, folks. Yep. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I mean, if you're going to pay, at least let the system work. I mean, at least, I mean, because the FastPass Plus system worked and it was free. I get that we're not even a year into it yet, so maybe it still has a chance to work like it should. We'll see, but. I don't care that they're only a year into it. They had a system that worked like they're you not said, even a year and it was it. free. Yeah. I don't, I don't, but. They are charging money for it. Oh, I get it. That's that's where the frustration comes in. If you have a system that's better already, bring that back and charge me fifteen dollars for it. I will gladly pay the fifteen dollars. I would gladly, Chapek, if you really want to hear something that'll make your ears sing, bring back Fast Pass like it was before. I will pay twenty dollars a day for it. <laughs> I will pay more than that to know that I have that system. Yeah, you get your money's worth though. You do. I you you're you're guaranteeing everybody at least three rides. Yeah. Yeah. You can even find a way to work in the one individual if you want. <laughs> Correct. And I actually like the one individual. Like I like the individual. Part of me is like, if you want to make a, re- if you really want to money grab this thing, just make them all individual. Do that for every single ride. Do it for every single ride, and every single ride you can make a decision. How much is it worth to me to skip this line? Right. This line and this line only. Because the problem with Genie Plus is I charge $15 with the expectation I'm going to skip several lines. And the truth is you're probably skipping one or two. You know those memes or whatever it is where they say you can have like, or you have X amount of money and then you have these categories. like It's like that you got to buy, like you had to put your team together. And they have, you only can only be a good one from certain categories. Maybe you should consider doing Genie Plus like that. Like when you yeah. buy, you have a dollar amount, and then you have to, you know, choose the rides based on the what the amount you spent. <laughs> Interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. Also, let people book not just the next available time, but a time that works best for them. But you know, that's neither here nor there. My final review is that the trip was tiring, way more tiring than it has been in the past. But it was a huge success. I think. I think everybody had a great time. And I feel like I did my tour guide duties well. I'm glad I got to go to the pool at the end of the the day. I'm glad I got to see some of my favorite bartenders. Kit at the Coronado Springs pool was there. I did not get to see Chris at Bar Riva, but I did find out he was working earlier that day. And a huge shout out to Daniel at the Dahlia Lounge. We did go up there one night and he was fantastic to talk to. Uh, and he has been at several bars as well. He was a Disney nut just as much as me. We had a great time. Cast members, as always, are a delight. They are what make that place great, and I'm glad to see that the standards there have not slipped and that there were several cases where I was able to cast compliments. So I'm very, very excited about my upcoming trips, especially in June. I have two nights at Boardwalk. I feel like I'm going to really enjoy that. And I cannot wait to stay at the Riviera. I am very excited. So that's it. That's the trip report. Another successful trip. Who's next? Who's going next? I don't know. I guess it could potentially be me, unless there's another one in between. If we get an AP preview of Guardians, we're all going together, right? I mean, that's got to be what we do. Oh, yeah. We'll go for an AP preview of Guardians. You know that's happening if that if that comes out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, well, I think that's that's a wrap. So if you want to hear more about us, though, you can always find us elsewhere. Where do they go? Well, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That is all at TWTM Podcast. We have a Spreadshirt store where you can buy your exclusive TWTM merchandise. That is shop.spreadshirt.com slash TWTM Podcast. And we also have a YouTube channel where you can see some, a few videos as well. If you would like to do that, uh, we would love it if you would subscribe. And we have links to that and more on our website, which is travelingwithamouse.com. You can also email us, podcast at 
travelingwiththemouse.com and if you want to book your own Disney trip and need some help with it, we have a travel agent friend who can do that for you. Her name is Jill Dilbeck and her email is jilldilbeck at gmail.com So, this has been Traveling with the Mouse for John and Adam. This has been Jason and we hope you will join us on our next trip. Bye.